Hello and welcome. This is a part two of the two-part lesson on described geometry task of the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Prototype Geometry Workflow. Here, in this part of the lesson, we will discuss about the working details of the shared topology task and learn how to execute it. Then, we will learn how to use the update boundaries and the update regions task to update the properties of the boundaries and the regions respectively. So, without further delay, let's get started. Launch ANSYS Fluent in Meshing Mode In Workflow type, select Watertight Geometry Workflow. Go to Import Geometry Task. Then, set file format to CAD and import the provided CAD file. Let's quickly look at our CAD model. Here, we have two pipes connected to each other using multiple nuts and bolts which make up the solid domain of model and the internal fluid domain which is the fluid flow region. We will not be adding any local sizing and will create the surface mesh with default settings for this demo. As soon as the surface mesh is created, we are prompted with a message the shear topology task should be added in order to proceed and the apply shear topology task is added as a subtask under the described geometry task. ANSYS Fluent automatically adds this task to the workflow after the surface mesh is created if it detects that a multi-body part has been imported without any shear topology. Before moving to the apply shear topology task, the described geometry task needs to be executed. Here, since we have both the solid and the fluid regions, we will select the third option for the geometry type. We will leave all other options to default and click on describe geometry. Let us now look at how to set up the shear topology task. For multi-body geometries where different bodies may be in contact with each other, it is a recommended practice to perform the shear topology operation at the CAD creation phase. This ensures that all the overlapping areas are handled appropriately. Quite often, this means that instead of each of the bodies having separate faces which leads to non-conformal mesh at the interface, the two bodies share a single face at the interface resulting in a conformal mesh. Though the Fluent Solver is capable of handling both kinds of meshes, conformal meshes are generally preferred due to their relatively higher numerical efficiency and smaller simulation times. In certain cases, however, when it is only possible to perform partial shear topology or in fact not possible to perform shear topology at all at the CAD creation phase, this operation can be performed during the meshing phase when using the watertight geometry workflow. In the apply shear topology task, we have two basic user inputs. The max gap distance is the maximum gap that is expected between two bodies. Surfaces from different bodies that are separated by a distance greater than this will be ignored for the shear topology operation. To highlight the surfaces that are marked for sharing, click on mark gaps. It is mandatory for the max gap distance to be less than or equal to half the min size value that was used to generate the surface mesh. Furthermore, it should never exceed the thickness of the smallest of the solid or fluid bodies in the model which otherwise may lead to collapse of such bodies. On the other hand, it is possible that the default value is not sufficient for a few surfaces and hence needs to be increased. Therefore, precautions need to be taken while defining the max gap distance to ensure that all the surfaces that need to be shared are selected all the while ensuring that no bodies are collapsed. The next input is the shear topology method which is by default set to join intersect. In join intersect method, the overlapping areas of the surfaces are first identified and separated from their parent surface based on the specified parameters in the advanced options section and then they are merged into a single surface. The other option for the method is interface connect. The interface connect method can be used to achieve increased robustness and speed of shear topology operation when there are matching overlapped surfaces between bodies. Matching here refers to the overlapping surfaces having similar shape and dimensions. Let's look at the join intersect method now. This name basically represents two different ways of connecting surfaces, join and intersect. The settings under the advanced options can be left at their default values for most of the cases. 
For more information on each of these settings, please refer to the user guide. Once the appropriate max gap distance and the shared topology method with its associated options are selected, click on apply shared topology to perform the shared topology operation. As you can see here, the previously single surface for the fluid region has been split into two to join with the inner surfaces of the pipes. The new surface is also remeshed to create a conformal mesh between different objects. Next task after shared topology is the update boundaries. Although the properties of boundary zones can also be updated in ANSYS Fluent Solver, it is recommended to review and update the properties of boundaries in the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow itself. It can be done using update boundaries task. Note that this task is not available when the geometry type is only solid. So if this task is not visible here, then it can be brought directly by right clicking on any primary task between generate the surface mesh and generate the volume mesh and selecting insert new task then update boundaries. In the properties section of the update boundaries task, based on the selection type that is label or zone, a list of boundary names is populated in the table. For this demo, we will use the zone selection type. Turn on the list all boundaries option to make the internal boundaries visible in the table. If any of the boundary properties are modified and the update boundaries task has not been executed, toggling the list all boundaries option will discard all the modifications made in the table. Therefore, it is recommended to first toggle the list all boundaries option before making any modifications. In the table, notice that the boundaries with the pattern inlet and outlet in their label are assigned with velocity inlet and pressure outlet boundary type respectively. This is because Fluent automatically assigns the appropriate boundary conditions based on the boundary name. Here is the list of typical naming conventions and the associated boundary conditions that are automatically applied by ANSYS Fluent. To change the name of boundary, either double click on the boundary name and enter the new name or right click on the boundary name, select set boundary name, click on the blank space and enter the new name. Similarly, to change the boundary type, click on the drop down menu in the boundary type column and select the type from the list or right click on the boundary name, select set boundary type and choose the appropriate type of the boundary. Click on update boundaries once done. To modify any properties, go back to update boundaries task, click on revert and edit and make the necessary changes in the table and then click on update. We have already discussed this task in part one of this lesson. Here, as we know that there will be just only one fluid region, we will keep it as default and click on create regions. Now we will discuss about the update regions task. This task is used to assign proper names and define the region type for different regions. Here the first column lists the name of each of the regions and the second column lists the region type. Either hovering or left clicking once on the name of any of the regions highlights them in the graphics display window. To change the names of any of the regions, simply double click on the appropriate region name, enter the new name and press the enter button on the keyboard. The draw regions button can be used to filter the regions that are displayed in the graphics window. One can choose between displaying all the regions or just the solid or the fluid regions. A custom set of regions can be visualized by selecting them in the table, right clicking and selecting draw selections in the context menu. This context menu also has the options to change the region name or type. If a wrong region type has been assigned to a region, then what is required, it can be fixed from the region type drop down menu for that specific region. The choice of region type is between solid, fluid and dead. Note that dead regions are same as a void or a pocket in the domain and are not transferred to the fluent solver. The print summary button can be used to print the information regarding the regions to the console window. Once satisfied with the region assignment, click update regions to confirm and move to the next task in the workflow. In case any changes need to be made to any of the settings, click revert and edit 
make your changes and click update to confirm the changes or click cancel to cancel your changes. Let's summarize what we learned in this lesson. We discussed about the working details of the shared topology task and learned how to execute it in the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow. Then we learned how to use the update boundaries and the update regions task to update the properties of the boundaries and the regions respectively. With that, let's wrap up this lesson.